we are going to be writing equations for secant, cosecant, cotangent, and tangent today. So we're going to start off with kind of the easy ones, tangent and cotangent. These are the easy ones, I say, because you just have to know if they go up or down. For example, if you take a look at number one, the graph is going up. So from yesterday, we should hopefully remember that this is going to be the tangent function because the graph goes up. Whereas number two, we can see the graph is going down. That's going to be our cotangent function because it goes down. And to graph these, we're going to write our formula. So remember, for tangent, we want it to be this one. Tan y equals a tangent b theta minus c plus d. So we've been writing equations before. This is no biggie for us. So we just might as well start off where we can. So to get a, very easy. We're going to look for the midline. Okay. So I just look for about where it looks like in the middle. Yeah, it looks kind of like even right here. So if I draw in red here, this looks like it might be my midline. Right there. Okay. So there's my that's my midline. And get the parts. Now the first thing they're telling us to do is to get the period. So to get the period for tangent and cotangent, very easy to do. All we have to do is count between the periods, between where it repeats. And that's the asymptotes. And if I count over, that is 6. But remember, it's 6 pi over 6. So each tick mark is pi over 6. And that becomes pi. So our period is pi. Now, to get b, we got to remember, for tangent, the period is pi over b. So to get b, it's going to be my period which is pi equals pi over b. So this is not too bad to do for us because if I put a 1 there, my b has to equal 1. Now, we'll come back and get a in just a second. It's actually pretty easy to get in tangent and cotangent. To get um, d, if I look at d here, that's my midline. We already got that. That's 2. Now, for cosine and sine, well, for cosine to get C, we would measure to the peak. But there's no peak here. So to get C for tangent, what we're going to do is we are going to find out where the asymptotes normally occur. Now, for tangent, the asymptote normally occurs at x equals pi over 2. So what I'm going to look for is my pi over 2. 1, 2, 3. There's pi over 2. Now, if you notice, I already have an asymptote there. So it hasn't moved. So my C here is just going to be 0 because we haven't moved from pi over 2. Have not moved. Okay? Now, to get A, very simple. Since I got my midline, I think of A kind like slope. I look for the next point. So I cross here at 0. If I think of it in terms of slope, I'm going up 1 over 1 to my next point. And that's going to be my A right there. A is going to be different for the number 2. We'll talk about that. That'll make, make it make more sense. So my asymptote, oh, I already got my 1 asymptote. Pi over 2, we talked about this from yesterday. It's going to become then plus or minus. Each one repeats every pi. Okay, so there's our asymptote. And now to get our equation, just write in everything. y equals a is 1, tangent of b, b was 1, theta minus c, which we said was 0, plus d, which is 2. So there's our equation. Of course, if you want to, you can just write this as the tangent of theta plus 2. Okay? All right. So let's take a look at the next one, a little bit tougher. It's going to be cotangent this time. Everything's the same. To get my period, I'm going to count. So this is my cotangent. My equation should be this way. A cotangent B theta minus C plus D. So for cotangent here, again, find my midline. There it is. There's a midline. I'm um, just approximating midline. It's kind of like where is it going to be evened out? All right. So... To get my period, I count between the asymptotes. This is just, the period is just really for cotangent and tangent is the distance between the asymptotes. Okay, so I count. 
1 pi over 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 pi over 6, is, which is pi again. And remember, for cotangent again, the period is pi over b. So if I use that, I get pi over b equals my period, which was pi. So put a 1 underneath there. Uh, b is 1 again. Again, we'll come back and get a in just a second. D, that's our midline, which we said was 0. Now, C is different. Remember, for cotangent, the asymptotes are starting at x equals 0 and then pi. Okay? But that's different here. I moved. Here's 0. So if I just look at my first one at 0, I count over 1, 2, 3. My first asymptote my, my first asymptote is going to be over to the right, pi, 3 pi over 6, which becomes pi over 2. And because I move to the right, we make it negative. Okay? Be very careful. This is going to be the tricky part right there. All right. Now, to get A, remember I said I just like slope. So here it is right here. Here's my graph right here. I'm starting over here at 0. If I go to the right, where's my next point going to be? It looks like it kind of crosses right here. You can approximate it if you want. It looks like I'm going to the right one, down 2. Now, we would normally say negative 2, but since cotangent already is going down, we just say A is 2 in that case. Now, to get our asymptotes, X equals... Ah, what's nice about C, that's our first asymptote in this case. So it's negative pi over 2, or in our case pi over 2, plus or minus, and repeating every pi, pi k. And now we can get our equation. y equals a times the cotangent this time. We're going to do theta minus c, which becomes minus pi over 2, all right? plus d, which is 0. So you can leave it like this, or you can go y equals 2 cotangent of just theta minus pi over 2. All right. All right. So in part 2, we're going to take a look at how we do secant and cosecant. So please make sure you look at part 2. Thank you. Uh, writing equations of secant, cosecant, cotangent, and tangent. Now, We've already wrote the equations for sine and cosine, and secant and cosecant are no different. So here we have two functions, secant and cosecant. To graph these, what we do is we just don't write the equations for secant and cosecant. Instead, we're going to do it for sine and cosine. And how do we do that, you may ask? Well, remember how we got these graphs by connecting peaks and valleys of sine and cosine. So if here's a peak, a peak, a valley and a valley, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this as a cosine curve, <coughs> like so. And instead of writing the equation of secant or cosecant, I'm going to write the equation of cosine instead. And that's very easy to do. We've already done that. So I just get my period, very simple to do. Now be careful counting by halves here. One, two, three, four. 5, 6. So my period is still 6 pi over 6, which is just pi. Now, remember, to get b for cosine, the period is 2 pi over b. So we're going to take this 2 pi over b, set that equal to pi, and solve for b. Pi's cancel, and what we wind up with is b equals 1 half. All right. To get A, it's just our amplitude, so I find the middle point. It looks like here's at 1, here's 3, that's 4, so, the, so where's the midpoint going to be? At negative 1. There is my midline. There's our midline. Now, what does that give us? That gives me my D. So D is negative 1. Remember, D is our midline. It also gives us A, the amplitude. Because so remember, this is A. That's our amplitude. The distance from a peak to the midline. And the midline here turns out to be 2. Now, to get C, be very careful. We're going to count to the peak. If I count over 1, 2, 
three, four. It's between four and five. So it looks like it's 4.5 pi over sixes. Now we don't like the way that looks, so we can reduce that. This is really 9 halves pi over 6, which is just 9 pi over 12, which is 3 pi over 4. And there is our C. And you can kind of verify that if you need to algebraically. So to get our asymptotes in, very easy. It's x equals, count up, starts off at 0. Just find one asymptote, 0, plus or minus. When does it repeat? When's my next asymptote? 1, 2, 3. So it's every 3 pi over 6, k. And you could just write that as pi over 2 if you like. Or 0 plus or minus pi over 2, k. Now to get our equation, now remember, we used cosine to write our equation, but remember, we're going to flip it to secant. So y equals 2, not cosine, but secant. b, which is 1 half, and we're going to go theta minus 3 pi over 4 minus 1. And there's our equation. For number 4, same way, up, there's my peak, there's my valley. Dar's my peak. Dar's my valley. And I just draw it. Wee. Wee. Now you can kind of kind of predict where the next one's going to be if you want to. One, two, three, four, five, six. So probably six over more. One, two, three, four, five, six. I may complete just a little bit of a cycle more just to make sure I can kind of get a good grab, good edge here. So. All right. Did I count right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And that's just really just helped me get my period up here, okay? All right. So my period looks like it's going to be 12. So oh, I have to need that. So again, remember, this is either my cosecant or my secant graph. But I'm not going to write the equation. My co I'm not going to find my cosecant or secant. I'm going to find cosine because it's easier to do. And remember, I'm just going to rewrite a secant in the end anyways. So to get b, remember it's going to be 2 pi over b equals 12. Using a little bit of algebra, b, whoop, remember it's 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi. Sorry about that. So it's just 2 pi. So b is just 1 for us. That's nice. To get a, find your midline. Hits up here at negative at 3, down here at negative 3. So my midline <coughs> looks to be at the axis, so it's going to be 0, because that's my D. There's my midline, 0. A, remember, is the amplitude. That's my amplitude. It goes from 0 to 3, so A is 3. To get C, it's the distance to the peak. I can count to this peak or just stay here. I didn't move anywhere. It's 0. So my asymptote, to get my equation of an asymptote, I find one asymptote, 1, 2, 3. It's 3 pi over 6 plus or minus pi over, uh, when is it repeating? Every 6. So plus or minus, take a look, when do they repeat? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, pi k. So pi k. And I can leave it like this, or I can say it's just, pi over 2 plus or minus pi k. And therefore my equation, I'm going to use secant, y equals a secant b, which we said was 1, theta minus c, which is 0, plus d, which was 0. Or you can just write as y equals 3 secant of theta. And there's our graph. All right, you have one more question down here below. Sketch this one out and turn it in tomorrow. We'll turn this in tomorrow for a grade, or go over it tomorrow. Thank you.